was important. I'm sorry I'm taking up all your time. No, that was excellent and a perfect segue to the next stage, which is the more we're in ownership of this, the more we can connect in the ways that best benefits us and to become aware of connections that are unhealthy and then with our conscious awareness determine how to convert unhealthy to healthy. And again, there's no one definition of healthy. Uh, a healthy energetic connection between two people, like if, uh, if we have an unhealthy energy between us, there are many ways I can determine the health value of this energy and what to do about it. And uh, again, like uh, Susan may not realize that she has attached and she's sucking everything out of me, or I may not realize I am exhausting and depleting her. It might even be a two-way exhaustion because maybe our energies are not in harmony with each other. Like there's so many reasons why. So as we become very aware of the grid of energy that's within us, and how to bring in energy and how to send out energy, we become increasingly aware of the connections that we have. I would like to bring into, like I was saying earlier, um, if you, when I, when I do my morning meditation, I all, or any time, any meditation, I always start with my root chakra and grounding because that's what gives me the solid base to do powerful work. And it helps keep me awake for a longer period of time as I go higher and higher frequencies. So I get a very grounded root chakra. And then I open my crown so that it's just divine energy flowing through as we did in the previous meditation. That means I'm not even worrying about my blocks, my issues, my idiosyncrasies, my whatever, it's not an issue because at this point, I am a conduit of flowing energy. So I don't need to worry about bonita. I am the hollow bone. You know, I am the tube. I am like the conduit. As we were saying, the live wire, the copper wire that all the energy can flow through. So then... If I really want to go up into the Akashic Library, hang out with Ascended Masters, you know, it's amazing how many non-physical beings love to chat with us, but we don't mean, like, we can't get up there. We can't get up to their frequency. If you really work on your inner grid of energy, and then you're like a solid structure, an internal mandala, a mandala within flesh, when you build your energetic structure, it's so strong, you can take it to many places and connect. Back to the 3D world, when you see your connections with others, because you're flowing with the divine love. And again, it doesn't matter if it's divine love from the trees around us or from source, the angels, the crystals of earth, you can Play with that too. Pick and choose what kind of divine love you want to fill yourself with at the moment. Think about it. angelic love flowing into you will feel different from uh, the elephant mandala of love. They're both very wise and holy, but they have a different frequency, a different resonance, a different uh, purpose for existence. And when you fill your being with it, it will feel very different from Bonita or Susan or Judy or Nazi, we will feel empty of ourself and filled with the other being. If you then take your energy centers and purposefully bring some of that energy into, say, your heart chakra or your throat chakra, think about what it's like to use your throat chakra, self-representation with the the energy of angelic love flowing out. And then people go, I love hearing you speak. Mm -hmm. You fill me with joy every time you open your mouth. And you're like, this is so good. I did not need to do years of therapy. 
I just let the angels, you know, resonate with me and then the words flow out. And the nice thing about it is not only is it powering up your voice, your self-representation, you also get a little bit of angelic advice whispering in your ears or sometimes like joining with your, with your mind to form what you're saying. And you're like, wow, I'm so smart when the <laughs> angels speak through me. <laughs> right? Explain that voice in the angels and the world with the chakras. Well, you can pick any chakra. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you do, and we will do this in a moment, is always ground. And again, it's important that we do not feel like we need to micromanage because micromanagement always comes from lack of trust in self, lack of faith in self. So we give our feet permission to relax. We give our root chakra permission to do its own thing and ground. We sometimes give it directions or requests like, oh, I'm feeling a little energetic strangled in here. Can you please extend further? But it will do what it wants. This is a big part of like mindfulness meditation where you bring your awareness but without action. It is also a part of the power of becoming emotionally neutral. For example, um, what you might perceive as my action is actually my reaction. So um, Judy, we're having an argument, okay? <laughs> and I say something that triggers you. To me, I'm just saying something like off the top of my head, not think, you know, I don't know it's a trigger for you. It triggers for you. And you say something back to me because you're upset that I would say something that, that is so sensitive to you. I don't know. I'm stupid. I didn't know that. But I'm like, la, 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 la. whoa, Judy, where'd that come from? Well, you're mean. And you're like, you think I'm... Next thing you know, we're having an argument. Each of us perceives what the other person does as an action, and we're just reacting. So it's just back and forth. When you do mindfulness meditation, which is just you focus on something, um, you know, like the famous body scan meditation, you focus on one body part for like, one minute, three minutes, five minutes at a time, and then you focus on another body part. It doesn't matter if you're focusing on the energy of it or the physical or just saying over and over, I'm focusing on my forehead. I am focusing only my forehead. Oh, I'm thinking about grocery shopping at Trader Joe's. Nope, that goes away. Focus on forehead, focus on for. Is my son doing his homework? Nope, focus on forehead, focus on forehead. For oh, you know, my forehead itches. And I say to my forehead, you may resolve this itch. I acknowledge you. You resolve yourself. Focus on forehead. You're like, I'm hungry. What am I getting for? Nope. Focus on forehead. Like you bring your attention back. You take zero action on anything. I'll tell you, I've had migraines my entire life. As a child, I was multiple times hospitalized for migraines that were so bad. When I started doing mindfulness body scan, and I wake up most mornings with a migraine, like my entire life. Like, like head exploding, crying in agony, migraines. Um, and I still do, but I do five to 10 minutes of mindfulness meditation, no migraine. I give it permission to resolve itself. And really, now we know it's just, I'm out there, and then I wake up, and so my consciousness slams back in my body, and it's not like harmonious, and I get a migraine. So, um, you know, when we're having this ridiculous argument, I say something, you're like, oh, I feel triggered. I'm like, hmm, so trigger. I'm focusing on you. What's up? Speak with me. What's going on? And the trigger will go, well, you remember when, you know, you were growing up, your mom always said this to you and it was like really upsetting or your school teacher or whomever. Like, I don't mean to, I'll lambast you, but not your mom. <laughs> but someone said this to you and it's a trigger for you. Like, really? And now, so many years later, I'm still carrying that around. Well, I can release that. And I feel neutral. And I say, Benita, this is so interesting. What you said just created this journey within me that was caused by a trigger. And I'll go, I didn't mean to. I'm, forgive me. 
and you'll say, actually, forgiven, and I feel better than I have in a long time because this thing has released. And then I'll go, wow. And you're saying that brings a response in me that I am going to explore because I'm so filled with gratitude because I thought that my words had no impact on anyone and you just had a lesson and you trust me enough to share this with me. And then the next thing you know, we're both feeling filled with gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, now, we all have triggers, like I do, trust me. And my siblings know how to find every one of them. <laughs> My unfortunate brother has been forced to go through this mindfulness situation with me every time we trigger each other. And all of a sudden, we're both so happy all the time. Well, not all the time, but, uh, you know, without we're like, yay, that was a trigger. Come on, let's explore it. <laughs> we get really excited. So this is where... As we're connected with others, if we are flowing with the divine love, the sense of what we called ego before, we begin to realize we probably were mushing eight different things into the term ego. So think of ego as your helper who will point out to you whatever you need pointed out and assist you however you need assisted. And then as something comes in and I'm hollow, and then I direct my love to someone. Judy, I'm directing love to you. I'm directing so much love to you right now. And you have no idea how grateful I am you're here. I was like, so, I mean, you saw, I ran out to your car. I was so excited that you drove and, up. And I have to say, I don't get it, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> you have a resonance that brings me fabulous joy every time I see you. I like wallow in your radiance. So, I send love to Judy, and then later she says to me, Benita, I felt so much love to you. So at that point, my self-esteem goes, oh, that wasn't me. I'm not good enough to send love to anyone. I'll do whatever self-diminishing thing, whatever. But I don't need to think that because I'm like, you know what? It's not about me. I am the hollow bone. I am the conduit, and divine love flowed through me to Judy, who is brilliant enough to receive the love from the divine, no matter how it flows through her or to her. And this is a miracle, and we all revel in miracles, right? So this is why I say when you work on your energy grid and the technique, all of the issues that we think hold us back from being good enough don't even figure in. And then later when you go and you work on issues, you have all these great, powerful tools to support you to go, oh, that's you know a ridiculous reason to hold myself back. Besides, I already went forward 10 steps, so obviously this thing that I left 10 steps ago doesn't even need to be connected with me anymore. I release you. That, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right. So um, on our agenda, We talked about you know ego and our heart centers, inviting our guides to come in and do whatever they want within us to send love outward and to fill us with love. One thing I cannot emphasize enough, always allow your, uh, again, ground, open up, let the energy flow and invite the love to fill your being before it goes anywhere. So that way, whatever love you send out, whatever energy you send out, you are receiving nonstop to your fullest potential. Do not ever deprive yourself. Do not ever deprive yourself to send to others. Fill yourself. There's plenty. There's plenty. If you're sending out to everyone else, there's plenty for you as well. So, Will, you help people. You, you travel to other countries to help other people feel good. You know, you, Will speaks in front of thousands of people about 
the power of feeling good about themselves and like helps children dream of their, their powerful adult lives. When you're on stage, you're so dynamic because you're already open and it's all flowing in you, through you and out. It happens to you naturally. I've seen videos of you. You are so dynamic and powerful. You're like a Broadway star who just opens up and lets all the energy flow in and hit everyone in the audience. <laughs> so, but we can be this way as often as we like. And then as the energy is flowing, filling us up and flowing to others, we are always being automatically nonstop replenished. The more we help others, the more we are feeding and helping ourselves. This is the most important. Uh, when we studied Prana Shakti with the Guruji Arun Kumar, very divine blessing teacher, he would tell me how he would, you know, like in India, uh, they don't just do Reiki isn't the only energy healing permitted in hospitals. He would go in and do Prana Shakti on patients. Like I saw that guy, there was a woman who had horribly sprained her ankle. It was swollen and she was crying with pain. He did Prana Shakti and the swelling went down to almost nothing and she was able to walk. I saw another fellow had a toothache so bad his face was swollen. And he had the Guruji do a little Prana Shakti before he went to the dentist just to like reduce his anxiety and the inflammation. The tooth had regrown. There was no cavity. There was no root canal needed. The tooth was 100% healed. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is very powerful energy work. The Guruji would go into hospitals in India and do Prana Shakti on patients up to 14 hours at a time for like a week, every day for a week, as part of, you know, his guru kind of, you know, lifestyle, taking breaks only for a little bite to eat and to go to the bathroom. And at the end of the 14 hours, he would feel refreshed because he was bringing all the divine love into himself and out. Now, he would go home and rest. He wouldn't, like, go out disco dancing. But he was not exhausted. He felt good. And I've worked alongside him, and I'll tell you, that guy can go, 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 like the energizer guru. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when I say, first and foremost, always fill yourself to completion and then let it emanate, it reduces two issues. One... You're treating yourself, you're healing your body, you're healing your soul, you're healing, you're, you know, you're being as good to yourself as you are to others. And two, it's also good for your physical body. It's also sending divine love to your cells, your molecules, your organs. And that's very helpful. So it helps with your longevity of being. And then three, all the things that were blocking you over time, they just kind of turn into little pebbles and then dust. Boulders turn to dust. As you go forward, not worrying about your capability, but just being the hollow conduit for the divine love. And this is something every single person on the planet can do. Okay. Yeah. If they believe them in themselves, if they believe. No, everyone can do it. Um, there are a number of ifs. If someone is like truly evil, they may take divine love and turn it into evil and send it out. Um, you know, there are plenty of ifs or whatever. But um, if they learn the technique, if someone says to them, "Hey, did you know you could do this? What? I can do that? Okay." But um, it's a little bit of a lost craft among humans. Animals do it. You know, Donovan the cat does it. <laughs> Snag is doing it right now. He's having a very deep meditation. <laughs> so 
So um, what I'd like to do is a, a meditation where we will take ourselves back to the place we were. Grounded, root chakra, wide open crown chakra. We're going to do two meditations. The first one is we're going to start working on our inner energy center as though we're making a network. Some of you may um, see that as like um, electrical wirings or some of you may see it like build a building. Some of it may see it like a jungle. Some of you may just see the energetic resonance. Some of you might feel it or just have a no, it, you know, however you're sensing is the perfect way to sense. So if at any point I'm saying anything, that's not quite how you're experiencing, but you know you're having the right experience, stick with that, okay? Um, if your mind is going to your shopping list, bring it back. <laughs> if your mind is with me, but you're having a divine experience and you're like keeping up with us, stay there. Now, normally, I tell you, if your guides come in and they want to give you a message that takes you away from the meditation, normally I say, go with your guides. They've been waiting for your frequency to get to this point to share with you something important. In this case, use your judgment. You can ask them, can you wait till after the meditation or does it have to be now? Um, Your guides are beings of the non-physical who are trying to mentor you while you're going through life. It can be your past lives, your higher self, your guardian angel. It can be any kind of mentors, your soul family, beings who are not physical, but they're trying to help you navigate your life. Yeah. Um, so use your discernment, judgment, communicate with them. Just because someone shows up of the non-physical and says, hey, I want to talk to you now, you have the right to say, can you come back in 10 minutes? Or, you know, can we meet tonight when I go to sleep? Or does it need, and they were like, no, I've been trying to tell you this for like three months now. And, you know, so this is my opportunity. I have to tell you. And then you can say to them, well, can you tell me and then bring me back to this afterwards? Or like, they might just grab you and take you away. We're going to put this on YouTube. So if you get taken off somewhere, you can go back and watch it later on YouTube. And, you know, I mean, you know I've seen it all happen. Um, so we're going to work our inner network. And this will give you the chance to really see how in this moment of your life, you are relating to your inner network of being, okay? And then after that, we're gonna connect our inner network to outer self. <laughs> 